My name is Fatula and I'm an Agile coach. I thought that in this introductory video, I could talk a little bit about Agile. Not as in teaching Agile, I think there are plenty of great videos out there already that do that, but more as in a chat of, you know, where does Agile come from? What is the context? And um, how is it evolving, if at all? Is it changing? Uh, I think that's a conversation that sometimes is, uh, you know, lacking out there. And it's uh, crucial, in my opinion, for the understanding of Agile. So if you're interested, uh, stick around. Agile, as we know today, started from the so-called Agile Manifesto, which was signed in the mountains of Utah in 2001 by a bunch of very fantastic software developers of their time. It's definitely what kickstarted the formal acceptance of Agile software development as a movement, but it was not the first time ever the consideration of Agile software development was out there. A few practices such as extreme programming uh, and even a framework like Scrum were around even before that manifesto was signed. Uh, I think Scrum was around since 1995 and extreme programming was there you know, ever since the early 90s. So you get to see that in many different places in the planet, as long as there were people developing technology, there was already this kind of thirst and willingness to treat software as some sort of different product that was a little bit more uh, accelerated in the delivery of value and in pleasing customers and in moving away from heavy processes. The Agile Manifesto itself tells us four things, four values. And to be very honest, you can draw a lot of important practices and ways of working just by them and you don't really need a lot of frameworks put in place. What the Agile Manifesto tells us is that people and interactions are more important than processes and tools. It doesn't say that you don't depend and you don't need softwares or tools, but it says that push comes to shove, you really need people to start talking and getting impediments and problems out of the way, as opposed to being blocked by whichever tools you have at your disposal and whichever processes let you or let you not continue delivering your product. Back at that time, uh, there was a lot of the industrial references for processes and for uh, product making, uh, very much in the sense of a factory style. It was a very common thing to talk about software factory. And in many ways, companies thought that, you know what, software is just like any other product. It turns out it is not necessarily true. The intangible nature of software uh, makes it, you know, a knowledge work type of product. And it really can't be governed by some very strict rules that actually can stand in the way of very creative work. So that was one of the main things that the manifesto said. The other thing was, hey, we're spending way too much time not talking to customers. So it says customer collaboration over contract negotiation. It is pretty simple and it says, yeah, I know we signed the contract that might say this or that, but we're really interested in giving our customers something that makes sense. So can we cut to the chase and it doesn't really matter how the contract is made. Can we really collaborate closely with our customers? The other uh, element was working software over comprehensive documentation. This is something that plagues us even to this day. Certain companies really just think that you have to think a lot up front and design a bunch of documents that people will read, will sign, those will become the requirements and they are the source of the truth. The problem with that is that it can take many months and sometimes even years to get the product finished. And honestly, we can't afford these days to have products that take that long to be developed. So. The working software, the products in the hands of the client with the client saying, yes, I like it or no, I don't like it has much more impact, much more meaning than no matter the tons of documentation that I might produce to represent that what really matters is working software in the hands of the customer. And last but not least, Agile is everything about identifying in accepting and really playing with the fact that change is inevitable. Again, given the nature of the type of products the technology was starting to make available, you can only think that 
as soon as you get something out there, you might see room for improvement for a new and different product, even if it's not necessarily just software. And then the Agile Manifesto was saying, well, you know what? Embrace change over following a plan. That doesn't mean that I don't plan at all. That just means that instead of being stuck in the original plan, a lot of things will happen. You know, life happens. And I will then have to replan. Actually, planning is so important that I have to constantly plan. I have to have several horizons of planning. And I have to actually have options with different assumptions. So planning becomes instrumental, fundamental for Agile. But the plan itself all the time is rubbish. So that's the origin of the thing. But then Agile, you know, it's been 20 years now and it had an evolution that's really interesting because a lot of frameworks and tools have been invented. Uh, you know, that's the irony of it when they say, uh, you know, don't focus on processes and tools, but a lot of processes and in, in tools have been put into place to help people adopt Agile. Uh, and they are not at all bad, but then companies kind of got used to this thing. Can you install Agile? Can you deploy Agile? Because I want to I want this one and done type of thing, which is very much against the nature of Agile, but that's what many companies thought that was, you know, possible. Yeah, come install and now I'm Agile, you know, and I, I don't need anything else. I'm good to go. Actually, Agile is about evolution, uh, not only evolution of the, you know, the software practices and the working practices, but of the uh, products themselves. And it was actually so successful, no matter what other people try to say, that it escaped the world of software development and it's a little bit everywhere. You might hear Agile HR, Agile marketing, uh, and even products, you know, products that are risk critical, like uh, Tesla and SpaceX, um, they actually use many um, agile practices and tools in their product development. So it really escaped the unique world of software development and became a standard for making products that are getting out in the market faster and a way in which I can learn and improve faster as well as me being the maker of such product. There are two models that I think I would like to mention um, with the evolution of Agile that are out there today. So with this need of companies wanting to deploy the latest structure possible to make them successful in operating in Agile ways, a few people felt the need of reminding everybody else that, hey, you can have a bunch of tools and still not having the proper mindset. Agile is a mindset. So it's governed by values and ways of doing things, not by the things that we do. One of them is the heart of Agile. And one of the people involved in there, which is Alistair Cockburn, he is one of the signatories of the Agile Manifesto. I personally find that in the heart of Agile, they really just try and uh, pinpoint the things that were very well understood since the beginning with the Agile Manifesto and were very emphasized by all the practitioners out there, but they wanted to make that very explicit. So I really like the benefit that they made explicit, uh, the values of uh, reflection, really, uh, you know, you, you retrospect, you, you do things and you look back and see how have I done that in a good way, in a bad way? What can be improved? There is this huge focus in learning and improving and, and you know inspecting and adapting. It is really at the core of what Agile is. And I think Heart of Agile did a great job in uh, putting those out there very clearly for whoever had not understood that first. And they also had a very interesting um, approach to make sure that in case you didn't understand, we find that collaboration is key. And they do that because the products that we build today with the technology and the demand of today, they really require a lot of insight and creativity. And one brain, no matter, no matter you know, how fantastic and how amazing and creative uh, this brain is, two, three, four, you know, diversity of thinking and of insights just creates better products overall. So they really put collaboration as well at you know an important part as an important element of um, the agile mindset. 
Another uh, model uh, or you know set of mental tools or values is the uh, modern agile. This one uh, I like it a lot too, but I do find that people have different interpretations um, of what they mean, and uh, it's funny. I think they they both work, but I think it is important to then try and figure it out. Uh, a consistent way of applying your understanding of it because they can go they can on very on very different sides so in modern agile they have four principles and it's funny because uh, you see that you know despite the evolution of agile they kept it simple as in can we make it four or less principles so it's an interesting um, uh, consistency in those models if you look at modern Agile, they have these four values and one of the interpretations um, that I see is when they talk about making people awesome and making safety a prerequisite. There is no doubt that modern Agile is putting um, the importance uh, of many of the practices and the insights that we get towards the human. It is very human centered. Um, what I think it's important to make a distinction here is that some people think that it means make the people that work in your company awesome so that they can create the best work possible, uh, make it a safe space for them to be a best version of themselves. But it is not wrong and it's a fantastic way of approaching how you treat your people and how you develop ways of working. But if you're really cautious and you really look at what they say on the, you know, on their guiding principles, you will see that the aspect of making people awesome that they really mentioned has to do with your product. Modern Agile is a very product-centered approach to Agile, still, just like the origin of the, um, in the Agile Manifesto. So when they say make people awesome, what they're really thinking is, how can this product make my client awesome? What kind of awesomeness am I bringing into the lives of people? The same way for safety, I mean, safety for my customer. How can I make this the best quality, the best safe safety product? How can, in the ways of making my product, I build safeguards and you know guardrails toward my ways of working and the ways of operating the product so that failure is not even a possibility? So you get to see that those are very different interpretations. Um, even though they are not conflicting, you could have all of those, uh, if you will. They are interpretations that the second one really is what is described as their guiding principles. And the first one, when I mentioned, uh, you know, how you treat the people in your company and, you know, almost like people management type of um, uh, principles and ways of thinking, uh, it is not wrong but it's not what they describe in the, in the model. Uh, and then, you know, as a very uh, product-centered um, approach, it's still, uh, you're still gonna find the other two um, principles or values really related to how you build your products. You have the inspect and adapt, which is basically rebranded as experiment and learn rapidly. It really is a focus on can you put stuff out there instead of just thinking and creating all that documentation like the Agile Manifesto said way back in 2000? And, you know, instead of just talk is cheap, show me the code. So let's really build a product and see how it performs. The, the more we learn fast, quick, uh, we can then adapt and continue to improve a product um, in, you know, that goes aligned with the other principle, which is deliver value continuously. So it really goes about the every time we put something out there, it has to make a difference. It has to be valuable. And how is that valuable? Well, by making people awesome. So that's how all the values kind of um, these, guide, these guiding principles, they all kind of mesh well together to create, you know, what modern agile wants to wants for us to embrace, which is very much how can we be very human centered in the design, in the development technology and process that we put in place. I hope this chat was useful for you to understand a little bit where does Agile come from and what does it really mean and how do you really try and think or what kind of problems you try to solve more so than, uh, you know, how to do Scrum or Kanban or insert here your practice, um, you know, or Agile practice, which are all very useful things. But I do find that once you get those elements of uh, where does Agile come from, 
How did that evolve? It's easier to just go along with it and evolve with it. Uh, and then, you know, the, the tools and the structures, they just change over time. We are constantly inventing new stuff because, you know, we are people who we are curious, uh, creative creatures. So we just keep creating more and more good stuff and new ways of working. So I hope this video was, uh, you know, was useful and maybe even, you know, fun, a discovery for you. And uh, I'll stop here for now and I will uh, see you in the next video. Bye.